how um, how have you been today or uh, how is your day going yeah because uh, i listened uh, to many videos in which uh, they say that is not usual to so the expression how are you and less the expression i'm fine so they say that i'm fine is like something that in in latin america for example it was taught <laughs> i didn't know how to pronounce that word in 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 past but so that is like a something that was taught but is is not something usual in those uh, countries because the people uh, so say that uh, when you say i'm fine it's like a something sarcastic maybe but i don't know if that is real no no well well for us you see i can't speak for south america um mm. but in general it would, it would not be sarcastic here if somebody says i'm fine um we help me with my speed right because i speak kind of fast so just slow me down if i need to if i need to slow one if you think uh if you're really following me quite easily and i can speed up right so you guide me you guide me this will be much more interactive because it's just the two of us unless alida comes along i don't know if she is going to or not um in general if somebody if you asked me how are you doing on today and i said i'm fine i would mean it i would be sincere do you know that word mm -hmm. sincere sincere no teacher no sincere sincere yeah it's a really good word brilliant word lovely words um i'll tell you i'll tell you what sin sincerely it, it, so it's sincerely, sincer sincerely, sincerely, yep. sincerely comes from it as well yep so same 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 idea yep sincere Mm. And it's Latin. It's a Latin word that's come into English, um, and it means without wax. Sin is without, and seer is wax. So without wax. And it used to be apparently in Roman times. You know the way in the Romans they they made all of these marble statues. You know, you know if you think of Rome, Rome, right, and the Catholic Church and all that. You, you know, th there's lots of uh, marble statues. Yes. Y yeah. And, and obviously they were all chipped, you know, out of marble. Um, but sometimes when they were chipping away and spending months creating this figure, sometimes it would crack. Right? Just a wee mistake and there's suddenly a crack in it. Now, rather than get rid of it in the garbage, what they did was they would take candle wax and rub it into the crack, you see, so that it, it, it looks like it's not cracked. Because if you think of white wax and, and marble, it's a similar kind of color. So they'd color it and fill it in. And then what would happen is, um, when the figure was out in the sun, the sun would melt the wax. You following me? You following? <laughs> sort of. Okay, like so another word the, sun, that the sun would melt the wax and the crack would appear. You see? The sun Where would melt. Crack? A crack? The crack is? A crack, a crack is um, a very, um, very fine imperfection that you would get mm -hmm. in glass a brittle material like gra the gra when gra glass is cracked you, you know if i so if i took my phone and i dropped it on the ground and it would crack uh, yeah 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 so marble would crack any really hard substance would crack you see and once it's cracked you can't fix it right so the only way they yeah. would fix it is they would put wax candle, you know, like a candle wax. You know what I mean? I'm trying to see if we've got any candles. What do you say? Hang on. Yes. I'll speak softly. So that's a candle, right? 
that you liked, candle. You with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so if if you took that and put it on a, and rubbed it onto a marble statue, you could see how that you could fill you could fill an imperfection, so that it would look perfectly okay. You with me? I'll maybe pull up yeah, a picture so you can see what I'm talking about. And so, and so, but the problem was that when the statue was exposed to the sun, the heat of the sun, the wax would melt and the crack would be exposed. And so they created this term, sincera, which means without wax, which means that if, 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 you, had, if you had a work of art, which was a figure, and it was sincere, it meant that it was genuine, there was no cracks in it. And so that's why that word has come into English. When we say sincere, we mean there's no faults in it. It's, it's perfect. Hmm. That was a very long yeah. lesson in one word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, teacher. Did it make sense? <laughs> Look, you see what I've got yeah. here? Yeah, you heard of this guy? Lord? Yes, teacher. I know something about the uh, something about him. Uh, yeah. About him, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I bought this because inside it's got the Spanish and the English side by oh, side. Perfect. So I thought it would help me, and I also bought another one like this. This one's called um, Orms. Escalates. How, how do I pronounce that? Es, pronounce es, that word for me. In in Spanish would be escolis. Escolis. Yes, sure. And so this is the same. So inside this one, you'll see, I've got English here, and then Spanish here. So I, I have a. I have a book in the in, with the same. I don't know. Yeah. Is is correct if I say with the same format? Format as perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but it's a it's a English. Sorry, it's a physics uh, book that that is um that was written by a uh, Feynman, Michael Feynman. Michael Feynman. Sure Michael Feynman. The Feynman? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We would say Feynman. Okay. Feynman. Yeah, um, he was. A, he was. I love watching his videos. Um, yeah. Because he, he was uh, such an intelligent yeah. man. He was so intelligent. Intelligence. Intelligente. How do you, uh, Intelligente. How, how do you pronounce that in Spanish? Intelligente. 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 So you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, incredible. Um, man, and um, yeah, I like watching his videos and his lectures. I've got, I've got one of his books. I think it's called QED. QED. QE. QED. Yeah, QED. Mm -hmm. I'll maybe pull up. I'll maybe. Is it helpful to do what I did earlier so I can type things? I'll bring up PowerPoint again. Uh, hi, Alida. How are you doing? Alida's joined, it looks like. Hi. Hi. How are you sure. doing? Hi, hi, hi Alida. <laughs> nice this, to meet you. <laughs> this, this is going to feel like a family because it's just the, the three of us. So, so it'll be much easier for you to talk. Yes, teacher. And, yeah. and we are Colombian. <laughs> You're both Colombian. Right? Only Colombian. Does that mean yeah. you're talk does that mean you're talkative? See, I think I know Alida already because she left me a couple of voicemails and she was very laughing and very happy. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> I know what she's like. We're gonna get on just fine. <laughs> so I'll pull I'll pull up um PowerPoint. And um what we'll do is we'll create a new a new lesson with this. So let me share that with you guys. Um, share screen. Okay. Teacher, I I have um 
I have wondered, uh, I didn't say lately, how how do you listen to the Latin people when um, speak English? So I mean, is so awful the, the accent or maybe is something not terrible, not so terrible? So I mean, yeah. when, when I listen to talk, uh, for example, uh, to, sorry, yes, when I listen to talk, some people from UK or uh, United States yeah. um, talking in Spanish, so sometimes uh, they have like an accent, but it's not something terrible. So I mean, uh, sometimes it's like a, something normal. It's, it's, it's something that the people speak fluently, uh, but the accent is not something, I don't know how to say that, noticeable, maybe? Yeah, that's perfect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. but I don't know if that happened uh, with us when we talk in English, so if the if the um, accent is very different from your, from your, uh, from yours, or maybe it could be like something, I don't yes. know, <laughs> like a average. Yes. So, so. I will be sincere. Yeah. <laughs> <in my Please. laughs> Alita, you just missed the lesson. Just a very quick one there on sincere. And I was explaining what that word meant. Have you heard of that word, Alida? First of all, am I pronouncing My listening is not very, very good, teacher. Um, okay. Sometimes I, I, I hear a lot, but uh, about the question that EO is, for me, is, is, is easy identity when the person is the UK on, or the USA. Um is is the accent the US the U the UK uh, for example the letter R is no is not is no stronger but when the person is the USA the R is very 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 stronger um I listening what or or watch I listen in podcast um, about the, the about the two uh, both 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 accents. Uh, I don't know. For me, it's easy. What difference when the U.S. when is the U.S.A. when is the U. Latin America, for example, in, in the morning when the EO dijo sorry yo Colombia, my mind <laughs> Colombia. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's I, yeah. I, I think so, is there muy marcado con la voz? Yeah. Va muy marcado con la voz, o sea, con el acento que tenemos de latino, así mismo marcamos el, el sí. inglés. Sí, sí. So. Uh, so there's a yeah, lot of... But, so I, what I mean is that when when we listen people from a uh, UK or a uh, USA talking in Spanish, yeah, yeah. so uh, we can uh, notice, for example, also sometimes the uh, the accent, but not always because when the people um I don't know have like a good Spanish, um so is not something noticeable, yeah. My question is if happens the same with people from Latin America that speak uh, English. So if the accent is very noticeable, uh, noticeable uh, for people from UK and United States. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know if, if, if yeah, I am clear. I, 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 I apprehend it. I, I get the question. So let me answer. So yes, the Spanish that I have met so far. So, so first of all, my history with this app is very young, right? I've only been using the app for about one month. One, uno miso, uno misa, in uno misa, right? And I have only been using, created this week group about two weeks ago, like literally. And last week was the first time I did an online class on Zoom. 
um, because it's easier, you know, rather than have one conversation with, you know, EO and then another conversation with Lina and another conversation, you know, you know, you'd spend all your time doing that. So this way I can hit more people at once. And it was actually one of the girls, it was one of the Indian girls, Shweta, who suggested it, right? And people have contacted me the way I thought it would work is that people who are Spanish speakers would contact me. However, what has happened is people from all over the world have contacted me and said, can you help me with English? So Saudi Arabia, Iran, India, Bangladesh, China, Australia, Chinese people have moved to Australia, and every country in South America, literally, Argentina, Peru, uh, um, Mexico, Colombia, Mexico, <laughs> <laughs> um, Dominican Republic, um, you know, literally everyone, even Brazil. All right. So no, so so it's very interesting listening to people's attempts. Now I think I probably test I, I decided it would be good to test people. And so I got them to do my little um, tongue twisters, Betty bought a bit of butter. And I Lida, you had a really good go at that. It's difficult for me. It was funny. It's very, very it was difficult. so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> Because you managed Betty bought a bit of butter, no problem. But when it came to Peter picked a peck of pickles. I know, Peter pickles. You struggled with that. Did I give those to you as well, Io? Io? Did I send them to you? Yes, teacher. But I remember that I can't uh, pronounce many words of these. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 so what, I what I discovered, well, we'll do it. We'll do it together, all three of us, right? It's nice and slow. But what I discovered was the Spanish speakers can't do Peter picked a peck of peck. You, none of, no, no Spanish speaker can do it. None. Very interesting, <laughs> right? The ones in Iran could do it. The Iranian ladies are pretty good at English, but still sound foreign to us. The Indian girls and one guy, he's kind of quiet, but he's he's there. Speak English not bad because they learn it in school as a second language. But they speak English there with a very distinct Indian accent. Oh yes, sir, thank you very much, sir. You know, it, it doesn't sound like English to us. It sounds, you know. <laughs> They speak very fast, and you know, the head bob, you know, it's very unusual for us. And we don't like it, right? In the sense that we don't enjoy listening to that accent. Um, so that's, that's my sincere answer. A better word to use in this scenario is candid. That's my candid answer, which means my truthful answer to your question. How do the Spanish speakers sound? The Spanish speakers sound, they speak with an accent. Now there's a girl, Gemma, who is Spanish from Catalonia, who worked with me. She actually worked for me for a while in my work. And she had worked at Amazon. So she's European. She's worked at Amazon in the UK and she's worked at the bank for a number of years. So a lot of exposure to British, UK, Scottish accents. Now Gemma still speaks with an accent. Now she's very good, very good, but still there's a wee bit of an accent there. So when she worked for me, I used to correct her. She used to enjoy that, you know. Alan, 
you learn me this, you learn me that, you know, and I'd say, Gemma, I don't learn you anything. I will teach you. <laughs> just me things like that, that, you know, just from her background. So it's, it's, it's good fun that I actually enjoy that. I enjoy this teaching thing, actually. But I've only, I've only ever done it in the context of work. You know, when I've worked, I worked in, I used to work for Microsoft and I worked with a girl, Cindy, who was Taiwanese, but she lived in America. She was schooled in America. I went to university there and then she'd worked for HP and then she worked with Microsoft. And then she came to work in the UK and she worked with me. And Cindy, again, was very good. I mean, excellent English, really good. But it was not perfect. It was not perfect. So if she would say something that was the, where the grammar was not correct, I would, I would help her, you know? So it's funny, through my life, I've always ended up working with other people who've had some form of accent who were non-native. And I've tried to help them along the way. But this is the first time I've done it with, you know, strangers, if in effect. Um, although, I, you know, I, I don't feel people are strange anymore. Like once I've met them once or twice online, I feel we're friends already. Um, like, so these Iranian ladies, right? I feel we're friends already. You know what I mean? Just after a couple of weeks, because you're just you're chatting, they send me messages, they send me photographs, you know? It's like suddenly you're friends with these people. And... We have a funny expression we use in Scotland. This is a Scottish thing. We would say, who knew? Who knew? Right? What that means is, who knew that that would happen? You see, it's not something that I had expected, you know? So, so it's quite fun. I'm enjoying it. And I'm hoping that in the fullness of time, that's another good expression. I'll write it up. The fullness of time that I'll also get to learn some Spanish. <laughs> and you guys can help me with my Spanish accent. How is that? So let's, let's uh, let me cl clear the, the, the space here and um, we'll, create, we'll create some words. Uh, teacher, I have a question about, um, it's different about the topics. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I learned faster the present present tense for me is is a topic a little difficult present perfect um, future perfect past past perfect in grammar um, and why, why the way is is the the form or the way easy, easy, easy for the learning. Well, it's interesting. See, you're going Thank to, you. Mm -hmm. you are going to. Present perfect, present, present perfect. Present perfect. See, you are going to expose me here, right? Because us native speakers don't learn the grammar <laughs> like you foreign people do, right? You know much more about the grammar than I do. I know what's right, you know, I know what's right. And I know what sounds right and sounds wrong. But sometimes I struggle to say, oh, that's what tense that is. So, so I'll, I'll do a bit of learning here as we go. So give me some examples. I'll, I'll, I'll just write up I'll create a new sheet here, a uh, new slide, and, and I'll create new words here, okay? Or expressions. Yeah, okay. And so I said, uh, sincere, recovered, candid, and I just said as well, in the fullness of time which means um, it, it's like shortly, but maybe not, in, not too short. 
that's sort of medium term. Does that does that make sense? I'll share these on the, you don't have, you can make notes of obviously, but I will, I will take these screen prints and stick them on the group as well. It means truthfully, give an example, he answered the difficult question candidly. See? The here I'll give an example. The politician was unusual. Teacher? Yeah. Um, in that part when uh, you say sincere come from Latin without what's yeah. literally, in that case, so do you mean that is uh, without a Trump, maybe? Repeat that last thing you said. Yeah, that when you say in that part without works, it uh, works. Yeah. Wax, yeah. Uh, that means so I mean what is the um, the literally um, translation of works, but so I mean there is like uh, something similar to without Trump maybe to refer this sincere. Without Trump. Trump. I, I don't know it. Trump, a trick. Uh, I didn't know how to say it. <laughs> uh, I, I think so. Without what is, is Trump? true, true, Wait a... true. Yes, like true. I, the, I, yeah. The, ah. the politician was unusual in that he spoke sincerely and people trusted him sorry teacher the word so i don't know why it confused all the words <laughs> but so i mean without works means without trap yeah I, 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 again i'm not processing the word you're saying there without what we so when we say uh sincere sincere sorry came from latin yeah. without works what could be replaced by so why don't you go on to the um the wee message thing in zoom and write what you're saying so that i i, I pick it up because i'm not i'm not picking you up so if, on zoom there's some facility here where we can send messages to each other and you can write to me please one t-shirt trap <laughs> Trap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Is, is that meaning of works? No. Is that meaning? Is that synonym? Sorry. No. Write the chat, please. You. Yeah. So I I know the word you're using now. So that's good. That's we're, we're making progress. Hang on. Trap. Yeah. Okay. Trap. So I I I, I trap. Yeah, my question is if in that case the trap, so I mean, when you say without works is without trap? No. Without any trap, maybe? Um, you could say without a lie, maybe. Because yeah. so when, when, when I look for this meaning, works, yeah, literally says that it's like a substance that is used to make the um, the candles yes that's yeah right. that's right and my question is if if i i don't know if i try to understand what is wax in this context of sincere uh, it's because i think that is something that doesn't cause any i don't know like uh so i mean when when i think about this substance yeah 
I think about, for example, something that is sliding, like something soft, like something. Yes. yes. I didn't know that can burn easily, right? Yes. And so that's why I say, if it is similar to say trap, because it's something that is not something secure, I mean. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I, I get you, but it's not correct, right? It's not correct. Mm -hmm. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll do, these, these are two different concepts that you shouldn't bring together, right? Because they're quite different things and we'll explain both carefully, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to look up on Google. Let me go into Google. Um, I'll go into Google here and I'll look up Google Translate. And we'll look up what the Spanish word is, right? Um, uh, sincere. By the way, teacher, I I like I like too much this um, example about the politician. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why in Colombia usually happens that we always it's, it's believe same, in them. <laughs> it's same, it's same everywhere. So, so what it's saying here is sincere, sincero. I don't know, sincero. I don't know how you pronounce that. I'll, I'll, I'll copy it in for the thing. So what Google is saying is. Yeah. It's very similar. So you see it comes from the same root. So the sin means without, right? And zero means wax. And yeah. this is like, no, nobody, nobody in the street that you would ever meet would know that sincere means without wax, ever. I was going behind the word to show you where it comes from so that you can remember it. And so every time you hear sincere, you can think of these marble statues and them being perfect. If they're sincere, they're perfect. No imperfections. Uh, ah, okay. See? Yeah, I get it, T-shirt. So that, that, that answered my question. It's yeah. with no imperfections. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Thank exactly. you, teacher. So where a trap is something uh, like to catch an animal, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's quite a different thing to catch the rats. <laughs> yeah, an animal like a rat or a mouse. Right? Or politicians. No, no. <laughs> or, 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 I'm kidding. Right. Okay. So a trap is to catch an animal like a mouse or a rat. Um, okay, yeah. Please. And that's a different thing, yeah. Yeah, now, I, I understand quite well that word. Okay, yeah. so we've got sincere. Thank now, you. Candid is a similar word, candid. Um, but it, it's different. It's kind of like, these words are like a Venn diagram. There's overlaps in them. Do you know what I mean? Overlaps, they're similar but yeah. not exactly the same. So th the word we would use for little bits of change is nuance. This is a really good word, nuance, right? So what is the nuance? nuance? Uh, uh, nuance. Yeah. Um, sure, and in that case, a candid is a noun or is that an adjective? Oh, I have to think about that. You see, that doesn't come to me immediately. So candid, uh, he was candid. That's an adjective. An adjective? Okay. Yeah, because it's describing a noun. Yeah, so so the candid the candid politician. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If I say candidly, like I've got there, that then that's a verb. That's turning it into a verb. It's in a verb, yeah. But candid is a descriptive word. So that's describing you know, a, a, normally a person. So, a, a, or it could be something that they said. So it was a candid reply. You could say to me, Alan, can you speak Espanol? Hablar Espanol? 
<laughs> Perfect. And I would say, in English, I would say, you can show me what it is in Spanish. I would say, Io. Candidly, the answer is no. Mm. Right? I know a poco. <laughs> and I speak despacio. Is it despacio? Slowly. Yeah. yeah. Or, um, so you see, and I, I give you a candid answer to your question. It, so was, is, it was a truthful answer. Is it interchangeable? Is the, the word, the correct word, interchangeable with a honestly, maybe? I honestly it, 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 didn't it, speak Spanish. Honestly, honestly, yes. Ah, yeah, honestly, yeah. sorry. Yes, yeah. honestly. And, 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 and so, Similar to honestly. Yeah, sorry. Honestly. Okay. So I'm being honest in my answer. But you could also say candid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the thing about the, there's a little bit difference here, right? And the difference is this the opposite of honesty is telling a lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a politician would be known for telling lies, right? Um, not them all, but a lot of them, okay? And so you'd say the opposite of that would be they were honest. It was an honest person, okay? But candid, if I say something candidly, I'm not saying I'm not lying. I'm definitely not lying, but I'm not saying I'm not lying. What I'm saying is, is I'm being open. Mm -hmm. I'm being very transparent. Yeah. That's what I mean by if I say I'm candid. Telling the truth, as we say, warts and all. That's a good expression. Uh, that's expression. Warts and all. Warts. Yeah, so give it an example. Do you know what a wart is? It is the first time that I see that word. Okay, I'll, this is fun. This is going to be really good fun. So what I'll do is I will um, show you something. Right, first of all, I'm going, to, I'm going to give an example. Tell me the truth. Warts mm -hmm. and all. Okay. Now I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah. Let me see if that. I wonder, can I share my whole desktop maybe? So I'll stop sharing. And I'll try to share my desktop and then we can we can all together go to say that is a, that go, is a German word. <laughs> what is that teacher? Sorry, what was the question? Ah, so say hmm. words is like a have, I, I didn't know how to say that. Uh, okay, have confidence, maybe? Be sure. Uh, hang on just a wee minute, uh, EO, because you see, I'm a guy and I can only do one thing at once. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot listen to you and process your question and try and find my browser at the same time. So just bear with me. Ah, I can do shift to multiple windows. Right, sorry. I'm doing something not used to doing. So I want to keep, right, there's Chrome and PowerPoint. Oh, shift, shift, there we go. Share two. Right. Can you see that browser now? Yeah. Okay, so this is good. So what I want to look up is um, a wart. So let me show you this and then I'll come back to your question. Okay, so let me go here and say warts. Because translate in German, <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, so warts and I'll go to images. This might be a bit disgusting. That is a wart. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> and and the, the people who have warts famously are witches. Isn't that right? 
Yeah. You see, if you ever see a witch, they've got warts on their face. Mm -hmm. Yes, there you go, right? So, if you were describing somebody who had a wart, you maybe wouldn't describe the wart, right? Because it's like really ugly. So, yeah. that's how we say warts and all. So if I say, tell me the truth, I want to know what happened, warts and all. It means I want to know everything, even the, even the, even the bits you don't want to talk about. That's what we mean by warts and all. Make sense? Yeah, teacher. Okay, so that's warts and all. That's a very common expression, really super common. Like every, like, I don't know how often you hear these things in a week, but very, very common, very, very common. Right? Warts and all, tell me the truth, warts and all. Now, let me come back to your question then when I was trying to get the browser up. What was the question that you had, at you? What about teacher, sorry? Did you have a, you had a question, didn't you? Uh, no, was about no. that uh, that word teacher. Okay, uh, that's words fine. because I didn't find like a good translation. Yeah, because uh, that is something in German and yeah, uh, no, that is not uh, the meaning. <laughs> there we go. Okay, teacher. So, so like a, another example of words and no is for example if I tell you I don't know a teacher. So could you tell me how the Colombian people looks like for you, uh, words and all? Yes, exactly. Uh, exactly. And my answer would be friendly. <laughs> <laughs> the only yeah. ones I've met so far, we've all been very friendly and warm. Nice people. Thank I you, need to come to Colombia someday. In fact, all of the South Americans I've met are friendly. I mean, you know, Peru, uh, there's a few people from Peru have contacted me as well. Yeah. They're friendly. Okay, so we, how are we doing? Do you know we spent 45 minutes and all we've done is that few words there. But anyway, hopefully it's helpful because we're doing two things here at once. You mightn't realize it, right? We are not going through the most basic words, you know, here's a book, you know, here's a pen, right? You know, because you guys know the basics. So what we're doing is two things. We are learning more advanced English, the vocabulary, the expressions, the idiomatic expressions, which might seem a bit difficult just now. But one day, suddenly, like a jigsaw, it will just, it'll all happen for you and you'll just get it, right? So, so that's, that's one thing we're doing. But the other thing we're doing is, in that learning process, we are also getting practice in speaking and listening. So even in the 45 minutes we've been speaking and you were both on the call earlier, so you've had to listen to my dulcet tones for two hours today. And by the end of the day, you guys understand more than when I started because your ear is getting tuned. Isn't that mm -hmm. so, Alida? Sure, I, I have a question. How often is the virtual class? How often is the class? How how often is the virtual class? Once a week. Okay. Once a week, I'm going to do a class. But if any of you want to talk to me one on one, you just send me a wee message and I'll tell you when I'm free and we can chat. Okay. Because, because that's good conversational practice. And we'll just chit chat, chit chat, right? About What's going on? What's the weather like? How are you doing? We'll, we'll make it less formal and we won't do this. We'll just, just chat, yeah? Okay, thank you. Anytime, just let me know and I'll tell you when I'm free. I've got a half hour here or I'm in my car, I'm free, I'm whatever, and happy to chat. And hopefully, God willing, as I learn my Spanish, we can mix it. So that I can yeah, speak to you, I can speak to you and say, Buenos dias, senora, como están usted? And stuff like that. <laughs> Señoritas. <laughs> Señoritas. Are you both not married? Okay, very good. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Buenos dias, senorita, como están usted? You know. uh, lo siento, lo siento. Yeah. 
Pero eso me parece buena idea, profe, porque pues su merced también tiene que aprender español, pues como nosotros estamos aprendiendo de, de su merced, pues inglés. Yes. Sí. Primero que nada hay que explicarle que lo que acaba de decir yo, su merced, eh, <risa> es un sinónimo de señor que utilizan en Bogotá. En Colombia no todas las ciudades utilizan su merced. Es is like an slang, su merced. <risa> yeah. Su merced es como sí señor o profe. Sí, Mister. Mister. Yeah. En Cali le diríamos señor. Ya. La señorita Io, por ser de la capital, le dice su merced. <risa> Acá el eh, with uh, our um, spoken Spanish in, in Bogotá yes. is called cachaco. <laughs> okay. Or is, rolo. Is that, ah, yeah. is, that, is that an accent or a dialect? Both of them, teacher. Really? So it's like Catalan and Spain, is it like that? No, really? it, yeah. But is it, so is it only so, in Bogota, so yeah. you have, um, sorry, you are going to listen some specific words that are different from the other cities from Colombia, but also to the other, um, from the other countries. Uh, usted, or you in English, yeah. in is in here in Bogota is su merced. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, a, like you are more than a mister, it's like a lord. Yeah, is my lord. Wow. Something like that. Su merced. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm not that. I'm not that. No, I'm... it's just like a way that we have teacher to refer to other person with much respect. respect. Very yeah. good. That is a that is not only a say to a man, also to a woman, uh, to yeah. a woman, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just to represent how much uh, you can estimate that person that yeah. maybe that person deserve all your respect yes very good now what we would say is esteem for that right so i hold um, her let me get a her this time i hold her in high esteem okay I respect the way she cares for orphans. Make sense? High esteem. High esteem. Yeah. I respect the way she cares. Yeah, more obvious, teacher. Okay. So um, I'll go to my wee um, notebook, which I brought down, I think. Somewhere. Yeah. And I'll look at some expressions that I was thinking about that I need to teach my students. There's loads of them. I like. You know, okay. mm, loads of so I can I'll, see. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just teach you one or two tonight. But, um, yeah, so here's a good expression that I thought about. And this is just an expression. On it. Right? On it. On it. Yeah. On it. How is this spelled, Fisher? I'll, I'll write it up. Right. So let's, let's uh, duplicate this slide. Go to the next slide. Ready? Right. On it. Ah. Right. So, <laughs> so you know those individual words, right? So on it means you are focused on something. Um, okay, so so like on top of it, so it's, it's almost like literally on top of it, right? So, so yeah. um, um, 
I, I, I'll, I'll put in a sentence that guitar is is absolutely fantastic. He's really on it. That's not the best example in the whole world. I, he, I actually hate that example. I've just made it up, but it's not really good. Um, let me think of another example. Um, Teacher, I, I have ever seen like a, I don't know how to say that, like a modification or variation of this expression that was a, on my wall. So I don't know. So for example, you are getting a, my idea or something like that. And the people, the person can respond, uh, yes, I am my wall. Is, yes. Is, is, is it useful or? Well, hang on. I, I, I didn't quite get it. Yes, I am what? I on, I am on my ball. My ball. ball. I'm on my ball. I'm on the ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On yeah, the, right. yeah. On the ball. Yeah. That's a good one. Similar? So that is similar. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. In, on the ball. In, in another example, for for example, I I I tell you, you are on on it in English. Yes, yes. that's correct. Yes. For uh, is is like being being good at some time. Is, is, yeah, is, yes, yes, right. Yes. So, so that's an example. So, so like you're working with students, or e, e, e is anyway. She's working with students, um, and she says to students, "This is a good example. Thank you for that, making me think of that." Um, so she says to one of her students, "Have you done your homework?" And he would say. Actually, no, ma'am, but I'm on it. I'm on it. And what he means is, I'm not ignoring it. I'm thinking about it. And I've maybe even started it. I'm, I'm focused on it. That's why I said you're focused on something. You, he's going to do it. I'm on it. I'm not completed it. Um, and I'm not necessarily... Necessario, necessito. Necessario, necessario. I'm not necessarily having started it. I'm not necessarily saying I've started it because he might say actually I've started it in that case. But if he says I'm on it, it means I'm definitely going to do it, but I haven't finished it yet. But I'm, I'm either working on it or about to work on it. So don't you worry. That's what what he's saying to you. If I'm on it. On it. Okay, teacher. So let me let me let me write this one out because that's a good example. So um, um Alfonso, have you done your homework? No, ma'am. Would you? What, would you say, ma'am? Would you say, ma'am? Mam, mama, or the. Mam, ma'am, ma'am, in the sense of, um. So if we were, if we were expressing respect to say a teacher. Ah uh, yeah. We would say sir. Yeah. If it was male, and if it was female, would say ma'am. Yeah. In his, yeah, I yeah. understand. In his Spanish, is no señora. <laughs> no señora. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll use the Spanish since I've got two Spanish ladies today. Um, no, senora. Con oh. ñ, teacher. Pardon? Ñ. <laughs> the N with a, with a symbol upper. I don't know how to do that. How do I do that? Oh, there you go. Yeah, the, the first one, teacher. Yeah. Yeah, that. No, senora. Yeah. Um, no, senora. But, Peru, I am on it. I am deaf. You could say definitely on it. I'm on it. Right? 
Okay. That's a better example than the guitar one. So I'm going to delete that one. Didn't, didn't like that one from the beginning. Okay. I am on it. Right. So let is me. Is, 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 I'll, I'll spell it out. It means he is definitely aware. Committing to do it. But he may not have started it. He may not have started it, and he certainly has certainly has not completed it. Make sense? It's like a it's like an action in progress yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Imperfect. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Now let's jump to Alita's example. Was it, or was it yours, you know, about the ball, I'm on the ball, right? So, so we would say a very common expression, I'll come back to I'm on the ball in a minute. He's on the ball, right? Now that obviously comes from football, obviously. Yep, comes from football. Um, yeah, so I, I, I saw that expression in Instagram because I follow some, yeah. um, I don't know, blogs that, uh, posted something something expressions in english and i i saw that uh, i'm on a ball yeah yeah but so i'm on the ball so uh, we'll talk about he's on the ball first then we'll come back to i'm on the ball so on the ball comes from it's a metaphor right mm -hmm. so it's a metaphor that comes from football yeah. okay because if you're on the ball, you're the person on the pitch that's actually got the ball. There's only one guy on the pitch that's got the ball, right? So yeah. He's the one who's driving the thing. Okay, so that's where it comes from, right? So it's a metaphor from that world. And what we mean by that is you're very much in control is really what you're saying, right? So it means in control, directing things sharp, right? Mentally sharp. Now that's what I think it means just from my, let's look up what the dictionary says, right? Let's look up the dictionary because it'd be just terrible if I was guiding you wrong, right? So let's, let's de define um, on the ball. Alert to new ideas, methods, trends, indicating competence. That was the definition that I had. Alertness and intelligence. A woman like that with so, I, that's a horrible example. We would never say that with so much on the ball. We would never say that. We would say that woman, she's on the ball. That's what we would say. Maintaining customer customers keeps me on the ball. Yeah, that that that's a common expression, though, right? So let me just see if it was with coffee. So, in that case, is uh, so that expression is used more to refer to something other that you have to be careful of something. No, it doesn't mean careful. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this horrible example here because I hate it and I've never heard that in my entire life. Okay, but. Yeah. Maintaining contact with customers keeps me on the ball. That is a good example. Keeps me sharp. Mentally sharp. Yeah. Um, indicating competence. Alert to new ideas. So I'll, do, I'll, I'll bring this, I'll call this definition. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right, so okay. there's really two. There's really two. There's really two definitions here. Right, so I'll move these forward, and this one here, I'll move that in a bit because that's an example. Alert to new ideas, methods, and trends. Mm -hmm. Alert, right, and also indicating competence. In in this moment, we are on the ball <laughs> with your ideas that you are. Uh, um 
Yes. Finance. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so to go back to your one, I'm on the ball is a little bit of a boast. Yeah. It's a little bit of a boast. You know, you wouldn't normally say something about yourself like that because, you know, it's like saying I'm intelligent. Don't you know? You know, it's, 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 <laughs> It's like that. And so we wouldn't respect anybody who says, talks about themselves in a very positive way, right? We, you know, in our culture, you just never do that, never. Like the only people who do that are boxers. I'm the greatest, and Donald <laughs> Trump, you know, I'm the greatest president there's ever been. You know, none of us here have any respect for anybody who's like that. Mm -hmm. yeah there's a yeah. good bible verse actually about this it says you know let another man praise thee and not thyself yeah. so okay. you, you you get the drift so you we would never say i'm on the ball but i could see why you might want to put that in the wall as a wee kind of cute thing cute thing you can get away with things like that but you would never say it when you're speaking but if you're speaking about a third person another somebody else we would definitely say he's really on the ball, that guy. Uh, or yeah. she is really on the ball. She is a great teacher. The students love her. She's really on the ball. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Because so um, we usually see many things in, in English. Yeah, when, when you're studying. And but so I, I realized that not all the expression that I see are something usual or are something accurate for any specific context. And I always am afraid of that because I, yeah. so I think, I think by myself, when I can use those expression without be offensive with someone else. Yeah. 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 I, I get it. And people in general won't take offense. They won't especially from a foreign person because they would just think oh you, you you just don't get it you don't understand right they, they won't take offense from you they won't they won't take offense but on your first point of wanting to know when is appropriate when is it when is an expression what's the appropriate expression you see you've got a thought first of all you've got a sentiment in your mind that you want to convey and so it's selecting what is the right way of expressing that? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, you know, so picking the right expression and how, and how you say it. And that will all come with practice. I mean, it, it just, as if by magic, one day it will just all flow out of you and you will feel really comfortable. And, you know, you're both well on your way. You're well on your way. All you need is the practice. And talking to natives because we we know what we say. So as yeah. soon as you say something that's slightly off, I'll say we wouldn't quite say it like that. We would say it like this, or or by the way, here's another expression we would throw in there, you know, like that. Like, there's, like so here's so on it. I just thought about that tonight, right? I thought about it. I'm going to teach my students on it, right? Um, gig I mentioned earlier. Remember earlier in the class I mentioned what gig was? G I G gig. Remember that one? Gig? 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 So we'll go over that one again. So, uh, and... G-I-G? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you remember? I remember. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and, and I said it was like a band does a gig. And so... A gig. A gig, yeah. Um, uh, let's look up the dictionary definition. Yeah, that you say that was like a like a little uh, like a little performance of a band. Exactly. Yeah. So a light. Uh, so that's a, that's a jig. If you pronounce it like that, a light two wheel carriage pulled by one horse. A light fast now adapted rowing boat. Right, that's one definition. We don't use that very often. Here we go. A live performance by a musician or a group playing popular 
jazz, okay? So that's that example. And uh, performs a gig, use in the next definition, a similar, a device similar to Harpoon. Okay, I didn't know that, that's brand new to me. Okay. <laughs> Look at this, B on the ball comes up. How weird is that? <laughs> um, okay, none of those, none of those are answering how we use it, unfortunately. That's interesting. I wonder is that because it's American dictionary or something? Yeah, so well, what we do is we take this example here. Yeah, no, there it is there. There's the definition I'm trying to convey to you guys. A job, especially one that is temporary or of an uncertain future. So the example they give is working on the sea and spotting whales seems like a great gig. That's a perfect example of that. So you're doing something over the summer, but it mightn't last. How's that gig going? How's that gig going? Yes. And we also talk about the gig economy as, as a big thing. So let me just copy this definition in because this is the definition I want you to remember. This is the important one. But also, Um, there was another example that I didn't copy there. Yeah, here we go. Should have copied this. Yeah. Okay. This is a common a common word. I don't know if the Americans say it, but we say that here a lot. That we gig. Um, So I, I, here's another expression that we use. I'll make this the last one tonight because we're over the R, but um, size of the prize. Okay. Now, I guess this is new to you, right? You've never heard this, size of the prize. So the reason people like this is, first of all, there's a rhyme, size and prize, right? Size and prize. Um, so RZ, RZ is not pronounced like a Spanish Z, which is more like a C, right? K, k, right? Six, you would say six or something, or tricks or something, wouldn't you? How, how would you pronounce that in Spanish? Which one, teacher? Either, either. Uh, or. In Spanish? Yeah. That was Precio. Preci. Preci. No. Yeah. No. Uh, no, because uh, this price is about like an award. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, so if if I if I pronounce that word uh, as is in Spanish, prisa. <laughs> prisa. 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 Yeah, okay. Prisa. So because price is is with T. Uh, yeah. Alida. Yeah. The so, precio is con C. Okay. So, ah, okay, okay. So and R, this price is like an award. Okay. So R I is not like E as an eel. R I is I. Yeah? As prize. I. So it's prize. 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 And size. So that's overemphasized, but 
the size of the prize. People like this statement because it, it, it rhymes. Now, that is a business term that is used um, um, to talk in general terms about some form of reward, right? Did we have a word about reward earlier? Don't know if we did. Right. So, so, um, he is organizing a takeover bid because he has his eye on the size of the prize. That's defining size, not size of the prize. That doesn't really help. This is not a bad thing. So we'll copy it in. It's good enough for now. You could use it to mean anything where there's something big. It's an opportunity. And it's it wouldn't be used in the in the physics sphere, you know, it would be used in the business administration sphere. It, it might be used in the business sphere, but it's it's got to do with there's some big prize there, and you're sort of saying, but it, you know, it's it's not a prize, but it's not a prize. It's it's there's a big business reward. So in Alan's lingo and Alan's lingo, it's there is a large business reward. That is a potential to win. That's what size of the prize means. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll call it, we'll call it quits, senoritas. <laughs> yes, it is. So. Um, uh, so, yeah. One last one question, please. Yeah, go ahead. So this uh, size of the price is just used in business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From every reference I've ever heard of it. Yeah, I would say that's. Yeah. Okay. Great. Teacher, is is a, is a lot of data for you. Yeah, it's it's after midnight now. 
Yeah. So I, need, I need my beauty sleep or I'll turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> uh, um, teacher, how do you say, um, or how, yeah, yeah, how do you say in, in English, tras no chat? Um, so when when you are when you are um keeping keeping awake during the night. Yes. Um. We we say, and I don't know that I fully apprehend exactly what you're saying, but we would describe somebody who's up to the night as a night owl. Yeah. So we we would say an early bird or a night owl. an early bird is somebody who gets up early in the morning. Early bird. Yeah. But somebody, so there is there is no a bird that can describe that you are um, a night night owl. <laughs> a, owl a night owl, yeah. Here <laughs> or, or overnight. What was that, Alida? Overnight. 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 Um. Early bird. Because in Spanish, when when you don't uh, when, sorry, uh, when you don't sleep uh, because you are working or studying or something yeah. like that, we said, um, "Estoy trasnochando." Es yeah? No. Early bird. It's, it's bird. In the chat. It's a bird that means that you don't no chat. that you are, you are not sleeping due to a, a duty. Yeah. In the chat, in the chat. I write in the chat. There okay. is no chat. Let me let me find the chat. Tras no chando. Tras no chando lo escribo. Oh, I I I. I, I, you learn something every day. <laughs> Jazz new chair. I'll look that up afterwards. Yeah, Thank it's you. a it's a bird t-shirt. That it's means bird. that when you don't sleep the two, you are working or studying. But so I don't know if in English there is a verb that describes the same action. We we, we would say this. This is the nearest I can think of. A night owl. A night owl. Yeah. Someone who works at night or comes alive at night. For example, if if you are uh, if you will work the next day and I um find you, yeah, uh, sorry, and I meet you. I told you um Sorry, I will tell you something like, why are you sleepy? So maybe you were a night owl the last night? Or how, how could, so yeah. how yeah. is the way to express that idea, teacher, in English? Yeah, we would say, we, we would typically say, did you have to work late last night? Did you have to work late last night? So, yeah, I know late is mass tardy in Spanish. Um, so, trabajar, uh, mass tardy or something? Something like that. that. That's the thought. Did you have to work late last night? So, there is not a specific word to refer to that. No. no. It's just to say, you, you, look at, you look as if you were working the last night. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, what we would say there, we might say is, you look like you haven't slept. Um, yeah. You look like you haven't slept. Um, yeah. That's quite derogatory to say that about somebody. You would only say that to somebody you knew very well. You know, a, a friend. Um, let me say, you look like you have not slept yes okay teacher so uh, Aleida is right so maybe uh, you have to go to your bed <laughs> because yeah, you I, 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 I do I'm, I'm getting tired 
but it's been fun. It's been fun, right? So we learned something. I learned something. <laughs> yeah, it's fun so. for you guys too. And and we'll need to talk about this lot. I'll need to go and do some homework and figure out some examples of each of these words. Or Alida, okay. you can teach me. Because okay. I'll know when you point out words or expressions. I'll know. I'll know. But I don't okay. always I don't always know the technical terms from, from a grammar. I don't I understand you. Okay. I'll bid you buenas noches. <laughs> Good night for you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, teacher. So good to uh, get to know you both a bit better now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. lovely for the, me. These the smaller days. calls are better for that. They're a bit more personal. Small. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not okay. Right. Thanks for yeah. that. And um, so I hope that you all have like a sweet drinks. Thank you. Um, and if either of you want a chat at some point over the weekend, just let me know and we'll organize a time and we'll do like a WhatsApp call or something like that. Okay. No okay, problem. teacher. All right. Thank you so much, teacher. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, Alida. Bye. Bye, you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.